Come on, come on. to the ultraviolet light. The more ultraviolet light there is, the darker your skin has to be, or your folic acids break down and you don't do well. If your skin is, is not dark enough, the ultraviolet damage you. If it's not light enough, you won't get enough vitamin D. We are one people. Everyone you've ever met is the same. There is no such thing as race. We are all one human race. And that is not magic, my friends. That's science! Well, as you know, this festival was held two years ago. It was held a month from now. And it was too hot. Anybody here two years ago? Because the world's climate, and this is part of the bigger problem that you all, we're all going to have to deal with, the world's climate is changing. So please, consider the following. Everybody you've ever met eats food. I'm not joking. And our food ultimately comes from plants, even if all you eat is meat. You eat meat that ate plants. So we need an atmosphere that can support plants. We need irrigation systems that can support farms. It's important to remember, farming is not natural. Farming is what humans do so that we can have a lot of humans. And by the way, no matter what any of us does, the earth is going to be here. 
Earth's going to be fine. What we want to do is preserve the Earth and the Earth's climate for me, for us, for the human race. So the reason the world's climate is changing is twofold. There's two reasons. The first reason I like to call reason number one. I came up with that myself. When I was nine years old, my family went to the World's Fair in New York City. New York, New York, the town's so nice they named it twice. And the United Nations had a total board of the number of people on Earth. And it had just changed from 2,999,999,999 people on Earth to 3 billion people when I was a kid in elementary school. Today, there are 7.6 billion people in the world. And by the time, and most of them are here, and by the time you all are my age, there's going to be 9 or even 10 million people. And that's it, you guys. There's 10 or 9 billion people all trying to make a living on the planet. And then, reason number two, is that our planet is fitted with an atmosphere. By the way, our planet is round. If you meet anybody here who insists that it's flat, tell them, you know, cut back on the mollies, maybe have some lemonade. Maybe <laughs> cut back on the mollies. If you look at the Earth from space, the atmosphere is extraordinarily thin. If we had some amazing car that could drive straight up on some amazing road, you could drive for an hour at highway speed and be in the outer space. Coming here on the access road, it would be about two and a half hours. You'd be in outer space. And that's it, you guys. There's 7.6 billion people trying to breathe and burn an atmosphere that you only as thick as the varnish of a classroom globe. And that's why the world climate is changing. So what should we do? Should we run in circles screaming? No, no. You and I together are going to, dare I say it, change the world. There's three things we want for everybody on Earth. The first thing we find just a few kilometers, a few miles from here at Hoover Dam. We want Shit. clean water <laughs> for everyone in the world. Clean water enables us to have health. People ask me, that's really what I was asking over the years, what's the most important invention of humankind? And they want me to say uh, light shows or, uh, or uh, smartphones. No, I think the biggest invention really was a sewer. Without sewers, you really don't, it's really unpleasant. So we want clean water for everybody. Clean water also enables us to have agriculture and farm food and parties like this. And the second thing we want, you can also see in Hoover Dam at night, we want electricity, renewably produced electricity for everybody in the world, renewable and reliable. If you drive around here, you will see miles and miles, kilometers, hectares, acres and acres of solar panels along with the hydroelectric systems at Hoover Dam. We can do this. There is enough wind and sunlight in North America to run the whole place right now if we just decided to do it. Then if you could do one thing, one magic wand, Harry Potter thing about climate change, you would raise the standard of living of women and girls. And to do that, we need to provide education to everybody. Everybody in every village, every tribe, every city, every rural area, every farm, every ag business, everywhere. And we can do it. We can do it because of our technology. The idea is to run in the to say the middle of Africa has a very, very different. But what we're going to do is have a constellation, as we call it, of spacecraft orbiting at a relatively low altitude, and we will hand the internet access from one satellite to another the same way we hand mobile phones from one person to another. We can do this, everybody. 
clean water, renewable electricity, access to the internet for everybody in the world. And while we're doing this, I remind you that it's not a case of doing one thing and not the other thing. It's not a case of paying teacher salaries or building a new football stadium. You gotta do both. You gotta do everything, all at once. And I submit to you, there are two questions that everyone is asked. And if you meet somebody who says he or she has never asked this question, they're lying to you. They're lying to your face, as we say in middle school. Where did we come from? And are we alone in the universe? And if you want to answer those two questions, you have to explore space. Now everybody, I'm so old. How old are you? I'm a mechanical engineer. I finished my mechanical engineering requirements and I took one course from a famous, famous astronomer named Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan was on The Tonight Show before Jimmy Fallon, before Jay Leno, it was Johnny Carson. And he presented this idea of a spacecraft pushed through space by light, just sunlight. Although light has no mass, it has momentum. Those lights behind you are pushing on you, and it's asleep. And this is a cool idea. But government support for this, thing, this mission that Common Home was abandoned. So he started the Planetary Society in 1980. I joined, I'm a charter member. I got a letter in the mail. For those who are familiar with this, a letter was a plant-based information storage technology that would come to your house every day. I joined uh, uh, Carl Sagan's kids, watched the Science Guy show, and then uh, I uh, was asked to join the board of directors. At one of the board of directors meetings, I left the room, the other people took a vote, and now I'm the CEO of the Planetary Society. So I encourage you all to check us out at planetary.org. So last year I was on Stephen Colbert with a different model of a different solar sail spacecraft. And we are going to launch it again on the 22nd of June. After you leave here, come on down to Orlando to drive the rest of the way to the Space Coast. Be on the second Falcon, the third Falcon Heavy rocket, the third one ever launched. And if you've never been to one of these things, it is spectacular. It's just like yeah, it's like that. The thing goes up and over the top, it disappears. Two flames emerge way, way up in the sky, and these boosters land like helicopters. So this time, we're going to go to a higher orbit. The spacecraft has all kinds of electricity because it's got solar panels on it. If you guys are the sun, we push the back, twist in space, push the back, and we build orbital energy and change the angles. It is a way to make space flight cheaper, to democratize it so that we can answer the two questions. Where did we come from and are we alone? Here's the picture we took of Light Sail 1 four years ago, we're going to get far more and more spectacular pictures because there's 62,000 people around the world like you who think that space exploration is cool. So when I was in third grade, Mrs. Cochran told us, oh here's the light sail. People from all over the world send us their pictures, their selfies. We put them on a ceramic CD and we fly them in space. Check us out at planetary.org. You can be part of the next mission. You can go to our website and look at everybody's picture, just like here, only, only different. So here's a picture from space. Mrs. Cochran, my third grade teacher, told us there are more stars in the sky than grains of sand on the beach. And I remember thinking, I mean, I wouldn't have expressed it this way. But I remember thinking, Mrs. Cochran, are you high? Let's find out loud. Have you ever been to a beach? There are a lot of stars. But get this, people. There are more stars than there are grains of sand on the earth. And I hope that gives you pause for thought. 
Furthermore, you and I, everyone you've ever met, is made of the stuff, the dust of exploded stars. So when we have an EDC like this, it's really a galactic, cosmic celebration. Now when you look at this picture, I hope you can see the Earth. It's right there. It looks like a lot of the other gods, but it's our god. So after Mrs. Cochran told me this, I went to the beach in Delaware, the first state, the Diamond State, the land of Westland. And I remember thinking, really, I'm no different from the grains of sand. I mean, if you're in outer space looking down here at the Earth, you're not going to see any of us. You're not going to see me. You're not going to see the sand. It's just a dot, just a speck in space. So I started to feel insignificant. I started to feel like I didn't matter at all. Like I'm, I'm just a speck standing on these grains of sand, which are speck, which are in turn part of the Earth, which is just a speck. I'm a speck standing on a bunch of specks, which is part of a speck with a bunch of other specks in the middle of specklessness. I suck! But then I realized that with our brains, which are only this big, of course my old boss's brain was a lot smaller, but with your brain, which is just big, this big, you can know all of this. We can know our place in space, our place in the cosmos. We can understand that we're changing the climate. Just think what the world would be like if we had floods and droughts and severe storms, and we didn't know what was happening, but we do. And with our brains, we can provide clean water, reliable electricity, renewably produced, and access to the internet, race and stand with me and grow for everyone in the world. So my fellow EDCians, let's have a good party for the next couple days, and working together, we can, dare I say it, change the world!